And good morning to you. It's Saturday the 29th of March 2014. This week, 2014, this week's uh, United Kingdom Talk long show. Sorry, you heard me with a microphone open then saying one, two, one, two, didn't you? Thank you, Steve. One of my friends, Steve, uh, noticed that this morning. Thank you, Steve. And Wendy was very, very concerned that she didn't see the clock uh, earlier on. Uh, I have to tell you, Wendy, I'm sorry. I'm a bit of a cheapskate. I've only got a three-minute clock. Look, here it is again. Just a minute. There we are. There's the clock counting down again. It only go. Just a minute. What am I doing? There we are. See, the clock only goes to three minutes. Um... I don't know if I can set that again. No, once it's run, it's run. But um, yes, we only have a three-minute clock. So sorry about that, Wendy. Um, lots to do today. There's a few emails and uh, with you until one o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. And of course, boys and girls, now in this country, gay weddings are now legal. <laughs> The trouble is, there's no one to marry me. I still haven't found that person, boys and girls. It was funny, actually, on the Facebook this week. You know, you get those little quizzes that people often put on there and things like that. And uh, one of them was uh, a series of questions. Oh, I'll just bring it up and uh, uh, tell you what the questions were, actually. And the idea is um, y y someone sends you this little list. It's only a, a few questions. This list of questions. And you answer them and then you repaste the questions on someone else's page. Uh, you get some input. You get the input of the first question, which is age I was given. So you take the questions. Or actually, I'll, I'll put it on my Facebook wall now if you want to have a quick look. I'll, I'll put that back at the top there. Um, <clears throat> my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right. If you want to. Have a look at this. Let me just get that up there. There we are. Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook um, uh, Facebook username. All right, Chris Reardon UK. And at the top of my wall there, you'll find the list of questions. And someone gave me the age of 19, OK? So, so that's the only thing you give to the other person, other than the questions themselves. And it says, age I was given, I was given the age of 19. So here are the questions. Where I lived? Well, I lived in Roehampton in London, which was a nice place at that time anyway. <laughs> what I drove, I didn't drive when I was 19. It was a, quite a late driver. I think it was about um, uh, 23 before I started driving. What did I do? I worked for British Telecom Directory Inquiries. People would dial 142, completely free of charge. OK, they would dial 142 and I would answer the phone, London Directory. <laughs> and I would change it into all different voices. London Directory. London Directory. London. And it was also change. It was completely not allowed this. I would also change the um, things that people... Uh, th that I would answer the calls to. Oh, when did I say one o'clock tomorrow morning, Wendy? I'm not doing thirteen hours, dear. One o'clock this afternoon. That's how long we're here for. We do we do a fifty-seven minute show now, and that's because uh, our good friends at UK Health Radio now play out this show. I think on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. So warm welcome along to anyone listening on uh, UK Health Radio. Anyway, back to that, and I would say things like, "Good afternoon, Crossroads Motel," or "International Rescue." Rover's return, may I help you? And people would never hear this. This is the funny thing about it. You do all those different salutations, that's the answer to the person calling in, and no one would ever, and they'd still say, have you got the number of Victoria Coach Station or something like that? You know, I, I can still, that was the most popular um, request for a phone number. The number for Victoria Coach Station, and I remember it well, 020-730-0202. That was the number at the time. I bet they've got one of those bloody 0845 numbers now, haven't they? Yes, gathering in the money. So that's the other question. What did I do when I was 19? I worked for British Telecom Director of Inquiries. Who had my heart? There was a girl called Fiona. Fiona had my heart. I went out with her when I was 18, and she dumped me when I was 19. 
So Fiona was my first girlfriend. She absolutely had my heart. And, uh, but, but, but nothing ever happened again. That was that. Age now, 51. Okay. Where do I live? Bracknell in Royal Berkshire. What do I drive now? A Toyota Yaris. I've had some nice cars over the years, but at the moment, the Toyota Yaris, very, very economical, reliable, and the nice people at Toyota uh, do treat you quite well. So quite pleased with that. What do I do now? I do DJ karaoke quiz nights and YouTube shows and radio stuff. Who has my heart now? No one. Unless, of course, you're including little children, like, you know, my, my sister's um, uh, uh, children and indeed their children as well. And, and that's it. So just a little load of questions that were appearing on uh, Facebook there. So we've been busy, busy on that this week. Uh, oh, we've got some messages already. That was quick. Uh, blimey. Yes, you heard me saying one, two, one, two early. I didn't mean to mean to say that. Uh, Terry says, I sent you that quiz. Morning, Chris, watching you in bed on the TV, hungover. Are you watching me on one of those large TVs? Yeah, I didn't realise that. Can you, do you, can you actually watch this show? OK, live on a large TV. I did know that you can watch the recording of it on something like uh, uh, Apple TV or something like that. And it comes through the computer, doesn't it? I didn't I didn't know you could watch it live. God, that must be very scary for you, Terry. Eh? I used to I can't believe you're still in bed at seven minutes past. twelve. It's a beautiful day outside, you know. I don't know what you're doing sitting in watching this, to be honest. Eh? it's a beautiful, beautiful day outside. Right, I want to do um, uh, some... Uh, oh, that's it. Now, if you watch my... Oh, do you know, I'm dying to sneeze. <coughs> oh, God's sake, there must be some dust in here. Some, <laughs> I, I say there must be. I know there's dust in here. You know, hang on a minute, look. <coughs> oh, God. The trouble is having something, you know, all this gear in it. You're frightened to dust it in case you knock a wire out or something like that, you know, and it never work again. What I remember, I had this room decorated about, oh, it must be about two or three years ago now. And I put that off for years because there was just so much to move, bits of wire and everything. Actually, when I put it all back together again, it, it just worked first time. Maybe I was just lucky, something like that. Now, um... You may know I also do short YouTube videos, okay, two, three, four minutes long. And I do those most days during the week, Monday to uh, Friday. Um, they can be different things. They can be uh, serious ones. They can, oh, which reminds me, there's a, th there was a couple of emails. I think one of them's gone to my phone. This is the trouble being able to now... Um, collect emails from various different sources and you forget where you've left them. Let me see if I've still got... I hope I've still got this one now. Uh, is that in there? No. Oh, it's not there. <gasps> oh, there it is. Oh, I've got it. Right, there it is. So that's that's that one there. Yeah, I do I do uh, various different um, short, short videos during the week. Some serious, some funny, some news, some about me. You know, all different ones every, every day of the week. And it, it amazes me when you do something funny or you post something funny, like someone falling over, and people go on there and they say, I don't see the funny side of that. Or I don't understand that. Or they say something that's completely unexpected to the point or thing that you were trying to put across. And it happens often. And you kind of think, oh, did you, did you put that across in the right way? You know, and it's usually only one or two people. You know, by far, far the majority of people will get something. There was... This week I posted, um, what was it now? Someone, yeah, there were several people on boat, on the boat. That was it. This, this was a copy and post thing. And they were flying through the water very, very quickly. 
and they were going from left to right like that. And all of a sudden, this bloke was taking a right turn, and everyone's fallen over. Right? And I'm sitting there crying with laughter. And then someone put as a comment, this is on Facebook, as a comment, oh gosh, I hope they weren't hurt. <laughs> you know, why couldn't they see, and I, I do have to say, why couldn't they see the funny side of that? And this is all the time, isn't it? On the telly, you know, people are offended by something that should be funny. Now, often, when I'm DJing or karaoke, and I might be in a straight bar, okay, a straight bar, a straight pub, okay, and one of the lads might come up, how are you, you old poof, and either slap me ass or kiss the top of my head. And I think that's hilarious. I love it, actually. Right? Other gays would be offended by that. Why? Why is there such a lack of a sense of humour these days? Great comedians that used to be on. Stan Boardman. Um, who's the funny-looking bloke with the round glasses? Roy Chubby Brown. Absolutely hilarious. So offensive. If, if you want to be offended... If you want to be offended, you will be offended. I'm sure you could watch this show and at some point be offended if you wanted to be offended. Or you can sit there and just enjoy the ride. There was another one this week. Yesterday's short video. And if you ever want to watch my short videos, uh, just go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You'll see them all there, all right? YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. So yesterday was a funnier video. I've slightly changed the way I do the short videos. Um, I, I now tend to do them on the morning that I put them up. What I was doing before is doing them the night before and then, then letting them go at midnight. Well, if you do that, then you can't include any of today's news stories, can you? Do you see what I mean? So now I get up, I'm, I might go swimming, I might do some things. I might not even do them till the afternoon, but they go up now on the day they're recorded. Usually, OK, usually. So yesterday I got up, uh, went down to the swimming pool, come back. I thought, oh, I better do it. I haven't done a video today. And I looked at the BBC News website. And there indeed was a, a, a serious story, I suppose, a serious story. And it was about cats. And two people, I don't think they died, OK? Two people contracted TB through cats. And the story, if you could, you could have expanded on it, you know, the, the exact type of TB, micro something, well, I don't know what it was called now, you know, one of those Latin names. I can do Latin, but only religious Latin, you know. Credo in unum deum. Shall I have some, let's have some, some bells again, incidentally, as it's, as it, as it, as it's, uh, as it's gay wedding day today. <laughs> oh, how lovely. We like the bells. By the way, I am available as someone's husband and wife. OK? I, I, know what, I know what you're thinking. So if you're a gay wedding, which one's the husband, which one's the wife? Well, just work that out for yourself, dears. Please. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. So it was saying that, you know, it was quite unlikely, very unlikely, that you would um, pick up TB from your cat. But the two areas where these two people have been discovered are Hampshire, which is just down the road, and, guess what, Royal Berkshire. And I said in this video, well, I'm not taking any risks. OK, then it cut to a picture of my cat, Katie, in the kitchen. And she was walking and meowing like she does. Meow. Meow. And she has some very, very strange noises, that cat. Ever since she had her operation um, in 2000 and... 
13. Do you remember that? Christmas time, when she nearly died? Ever since she had that operation, her noises have changed. And there's one that, that sounds like it comes deep within her throat when she wants some attention for some reason. Anyway, so I cut to a picture of Katie walking across the kitchen and I said, come on, Katie, I'm sorry, you're going to have to find a new house. And, she, and she's gone one way. I said, no, you're going the wrong way. Come on, out this way. And I gently helped her towards the door and closed the back door. I then came to the camera and said, that's it, problem sorted. Bye-bye, and walked off. That was the video. Now, do you think... For one moment in your wildest dreams, I would ever have ch chucked my cat out to fend for herself. Do you think that? Even if you never knew me, and this was the first time that you'd ever, or, or that video was the first time you'd ever seen me do anything, do you really think I would have kicked the cat out for two cases of TB in this country uh, where they say that someone's got TB from the cat. Right? Two comments. No, but more than two comments. One, one comment from someone, and I don't know, uh, from someone called Shari. And the comment, and I, I just couldn't believe this. The comment was, you shouldn't just leave the cat out. If you don't want her no more, it's more humane to just end her life rather than let her fend for herself in the cold, especially if she's a house cat. It's best you just wring her neck or inject her with some watered-down mustard powder. Both of these kill instantly and are more humane than just disowning her. And I just sat there and looked at this gobsmacked. And I thought, you can't be serious. Someone replied before I got there to reply. And they said, unbelievable. Oh, sorry, no. I replied to this. Tis sad you didn't see this was a joke video. Oh, well, never mind. I mean... <laughs> oh, I just give up sometimes, don't you? You just give up trying to entertain. Ian Duff wrote, I thought for a minute you were going to put her in the oven when you had her near the door. My sister thought that as well. I wouldn't put her in the oven, no. And someone else wrote, agreed, tis more humane to strangle your cat with your bare hands rather than put it outside to fend for itself. <laughs> there was also another, another um, reply there from a Weird City Kid. I don't know if I can get that up, actually, um, and see what the reply was there because I've, uh, I didn't print that one off for some reason. Let me see if I can find that for you. It's just, it, it, I, I just don't understand why, uh, why people don't get, no, I can't find that now, but that, thank you, it was, it was someone, someone stick it up for me as well. Um, it, it just gets me sometimes that people just don't get it. And I'm not the only one where people don't get it. As I said, so many comedians, things like that, and they just, you know, oh, I don't get it. You know, oh, I'm offended by that. Oh, you shouldn't say that. Oh, I don't find that funny. You know, when everyone else, sometimes you, you, you put something on there and loads and loads of people, they get it like, 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 like. And then one person, why do you find that funny? <laughs> That's the way it is. If you want to join in at some point today, boys and girls, we have Skype. And local London phone number. You do, of course, need to be with us live. So, if it's now Saturday, coming up to 21 minutes past midday, that's the 29th of March 2014, if that is the time where you are now, then you can join in with us live. All right? Three methods. Either by Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R... I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. There's a phone number, 020 8133 
6358. That is a local London number, okay? Not a premium rate one. 020 8133 6358. All right? That's, that's if you're with us live, those two. If you are listening or watching a recording of the show, or indeed with us live, you can join in by a good old-fashioned email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, any of those methods. Or if you prefer to just sit there and listen or watch me rabbiting on for the next uh, 45 minutes or so, then that's just as good as well. Because I've always got plenty to say. Some people ask, um, you know, you do a talk show, how do you know what to talk about? I was like, well, well, I just do. I write down, you know, lists of things that I've been doing all week. Here's my list of things I've been doing this week. Quite a long list. OK, I never, ever get to the bottom. Um, also, throughout the week, I might have been looking at little news stories and things like that. And people say, well, what, what, what do you do if no one calls in? Well, you just talk. You just talk. A couple of nice people this week have said, oh, you should be on proper television. I don't think so. I don't think I'm what they require. I really don't. All right. Um, there's an email here. I want to do this one early today because sometimes we do run out of uh, uh, time before we get to the end of the emails. And this is from uh, Matthew in Canada. Regular viewer, listener and correspondent to the show. I had to reprint this, uh, actually, Martin, because the first time I printed it, I because well, I'm a bit tight with I'm a bit tight, you know, with paper and ink. So once I've printed one side, okay, and used that, I turn the paper off and put it back in the printer. But sometimes I put it the wrong way round, so it comes out and you get what you get a double print if you see what I mean. Do you know what du double print? So there's two lots of stuff on one bit of paper and you can't read a bloody thing then. So Matthew writes. Hello, Chris. How are you doing today, sir? I'm OK. I'm OK. Uh, well, the voice isn't quite right, is it? But that's all to do with my throat problem. That uh, I'll, I'll tell you about that later on. I hope you are back to 100% health. Well, yes, the cold's gone. I had a rotten old cold last week, uh, which actually caused me to cancel Saturday nights, uh, unfortunately, which I hate doing. I, I, I rarely... Um, cancel a night but you know I, I did say you know can you try and find someone else if you can't find them I will come and do it anyway but uh, fortunately found someone else I spent the entire night uh, laid on the settee watching the telly which was quite nice you know my, my usual Saturday night entertainment actually watched on Saturday night instead of Sunday afternoon and Sunday morning and all that during the week Cat, what did we have on Casualty uh, Ant and Deck I quite like Ant and Deck Casualty and I watched a couple of films, I think, that I'd had um, saved up from Christmas, actually, on the old uh, hard drive player. It's been a couple of months since I wrote into the show, so I felt that I should let you know I am still alive, despite the extreme cold conditions we have been enduring in my part of Canada. Cool. Tell me about it. I know about it. You told me about it last time, didn't you? Can you believe that until the last few days, we have still been going to down to as far as, go on, how cold do you think in centigrade? Go on, uh, how cold do you think it's been in Canada? Minus 29 degrees centigrade. Aren't you glad you're not in Canada? All oh, those poor Canadian geese, dear. How do they cope? Flabbing around, dear. Do they have to fly around really fast just to try and keep warm? The Canadian geese. They do concern me, those poor animals outside getting colder and colder. Oh, I saw something vile yesterday. Oh, it was awful. Preparing a live lobster. I watched it on YouTube because I heard uh, a friend of mine on uh, LBC, Steve Allen, talking about it last week. Live lobsters and things like that. It's, it's awful. It's just awful. Because you know I'm vegetarian. It's just awful. They put the knife. Oh, I can't even think about it, dear. Uh, the boiling water. Oh, no. no. The w a worse one I watched yesterday was, was, was crabs. The, this, this crab. You know, they've got, they've got this, like, I don't know, table thing. And they put the crab on this, like, spike thing and pull its shell off. 
It's just awful. Would that be like, you know, sort of grabbing your head and pulling the skull off? And this thing's still alive. And then to dunk it in the boiling... Oh, it's just awful, just awful. Please stop eating little animals, boys and girls. Yes, it's true. That, so it was minus 29 degrees centigrade in Canada until a few nights ago. No, thank you. Well, I'm not coming. No, thank you. Yes, it's true. It seems we are the ones suffering while you in the UK are enjoying beautiful spring weather. We've had beautiful spring weather for months here, dear. Months. OK, we had a couple of cold nights here and there, a couple of uh, little bit cold days. But we haven't had a winter. We didn't have a winter this year. And today it's positively beautiful out here. Outside, the sun is shining. It's about 65 degrees so far. Oh, you centigrade, aren't you? Um, it's about 20, 40, 20, 30, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, I have finally started to see a few Canadian geese. Now, what noise do they make? Ah! ah, ah. No, that's seagulls. Woo, 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 woo. They're like that, aren't they, Canadian geese? Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey? I've started to see a few Canadian geese flying around, which is definitely a good sign that spring is here. Have you seen many around your neighbourhood recently? Uh, well, no. Not seen any Canadian geese here, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, in response to your last show, I have indeed noticed that bio oil is doing wonders for your complexion. Yeah, I've been, been putting some of that on, haven't I? Bio oil on my face. It does seem to be making a bit of a difference. That and the weight loss. I'll come to that in a bit. I know here in Canada, bio oil is fairly heavily marketed to pregnant women. What are you trying to say? What do you mean, pregnant women? Are you referring to my weight? As it's recommended, they apply it to their stretch marks to make them fairly less visible. And from what I understand, it's quite effective. So I think you're onto something here. We know it's great for our face too. Yes, it seems to be working, doesn't it? You know putting on a bit of bio oil onto the face. Anyone else try bio oil? Wendy? Will you stop typing things and then and then deleting them before I can read them? I saw you typing something then. <laughs> something I uh, wanted to bring to your attention is the fact that there now seems to be a real flood of UK-based video blogs Coming to light on YouTube. Well, I hope you're not referring to this as a video blog. This is an international chat show. A video blog? I beg your pardon? A video blog? You're not, not suggesting that this is some sort of diary, are you? We do hard-hitting topics on this show. You know, worldwide disasters, political affairs. Hard-hitting news stories. Nothing is left unturned on this programme. Video blog? Beg pardon? It appears that it takes no time at all and they become superstars. <laughs> Hasn't happened to me, is it? I have yet to become a superstar. Do we want to become superstars? That's the thing. I mean, I'd quite like to sit here and talk to you, that's all. You know, like a friend. God knows I need friends. I need my best friends away at the moment. Oh yes, Ronnie. And funnily enough... Literally three minutes. I shall read you the text. There we are. Three minutes before I came on air today, 
I've got a little text from my best friend Ronnie who says they have just landed in Bali, which is near Australia. And they have been in the air 20 hours. And he is f f t. That's what he said. He says, and I'm f t. <laughs> f t. <laughs> So, uh, yes, uh, Ronnie's uh, away on holiday at the moment. I'm, I have no friends here now. They've all gone. They've all left me. Um, Martin says, it appears it takes no time and they will become superstars. However, after watching a real number of them, it seems like many of them have very little talent and don't come up with too many creative ideas. There are a couple of them which are quite entertaining and I could easily see you collaborating with one in particular who you may or may not have heard of, named Jim Chapman, who currently has about 1.3 million subscribers. Oh, I could only dream of having so many people. 1.3 million subscribers. I'm lucky to have a handful, to be honest. You know, let's not lie about these things. You do get, I don't, and they do make me laugh. And people on internet radios have, have also done this before and claimed that they have thousands of people listening to their shows. And YouTube people have claimed, claimed they have thousands of people listening or watching their shows. And you know they're not. It just, just doesn't work like that. Why do they lie like that? Pretend that they've got more than they have. No point in lying. No point. If you want to take a look at his YouTube channel, um, and he sends me the uh, address, which is youtube.com forward slash Jimmy Booba. I think it was Jimmy Booba, something like that. And I did look, and he did a little show with um, all that chef bloke. What's his name? Jamie, 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 Jamie. Oh, Wendy, Jamie, who? Who's that, who's that chef person? Jamie. You know, quite good looking. Got a bit fat a couple of years ago, but he's he's lost the weight again. Jamie, Jamie Patterson? No, Jamie. Oh God, Jamie. Wendy, which Jamie is it? Can you answer, please? Jamie. Oh no, can't remember. Anyway. Chef, very famous chef bloke, Jamie. He did, a, he did a YouTube show with him, didn't he? I did watch it. And they, what they did, they had to close, close their eyes they had, and, and they had various little, little tasting things in front of them. Close their eyes and fed them something in their mouth and they had to guess what it was. Oh, oh, you don't know what's going in your mouth, do you? Oh, I wouldn't like that. Be like in the dark room. <laughs> Sometimes... I really enjoy the short videos that he does. Um, is that in some of them, he provides genuine good advice for people in multiple areas of life. It could be something for you to consider as an idea for the future videos. As I found that people can always use some good advice and considering your vast knowledge and experience. Thank you, Jamie Oliver. Thank you, Wendy. Jamie Oliver. That was it. He did a show with him, didn't he? I think he's his friend. I mean, I haven't got any celebrities to bring on here, dear. You know, the only celebrity I've had on here is Nikki French, you know, who represented the Eurovision, uh, the UK and Eurovision a few years ago. I think that's the only celebrity I've had on here. Um, I'm sure you have lots of great bits with us to share. Well, occasionally I've, I've done how-to videos before, haven't I? Like how to do this and how to do that. I just make it up as I go along, you know that. <laughs> Anyway, thanks very much for taking the time to read the letter. It's very much appreciated. As always, please know you are in my thoughts and prayers each and every day. Your friend Matt from Canada. Well, uh, how warm is it there now, Matt, then? You said it was minus 27. Ooh, I, I wouldn't like that. I really wouldn't like to be minus uh, 27 degrees. In the Daily Mail, a couple of weeks ago, because we were talking about the cats earlier, and um, putting Katie outside because of the TB, right? People didn't get it. Other cat news, boys and girls.
can't bear to bury dearly departed tiddles. Why not have him freeze dried and keep him forever? Now, what do you think of this? OK, so what they're saying is that some animal lovers in America have decided they just can't part with their furry friends and have paid up to two and a half thousand pounds to get them freeze dried using space age technology. So, it says, animals are frozen to minus nine degrees while slowly removing all moisture from their bodies. And, you know, and, and they've got a picture of this big machine, right, with various dead pets in it. And this machine freezes them all down. Once the moisture is all gone, the animals are then freeze dried, with the result being that the pets look like they are still alive or just sleeping as they are frozen in lifelike poses. Now, what do you think of that? Some animals, some owners wait up to seven months while their dog, cat or even rabbit goes through the freeze drying process in a sealed vacuum chamber. This uh, story in the Daily Mail goes on. Do, I mean, would you do that? Would you have your pets frozen? I, I, I... The pet freeze dryers are even restore, can even restore chronically ill pets to their former living glory by using expert grooming techniques and old photos of the cherished animal. It's all a bit odd, really, isn't it? I, I don't think I could do that when Katie goes. Well, if she, if she goes first, I, I might go first. You know? Maybe. Maybe Katie will outlive me. I wonder if she'd want me freeze-dried. You know, so that I can... Well, I could, I could be just placed to a little... Next to a little cat bed. So that when she's a little bit lonely sometimes, she comes and rubs her nose on me, you know. Pet freezing. Is, is that for you? Do let us know on the email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Would you have your pet freeze dried? It just sounds a bit odd to me to have something like that done. You know, when they're gone, they're gone. Wendy says, no, 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 I couldn't do that. Makes me cringe. I should hope it does. Oof. It's all right having like, you know, like a little, little, um, oh, what do you call it? A little, uh, a, a furry uh, toy. You get a toy cat, couldn't you? Something like that. You know, a proper stuffed toy cat you know, that hasn't been alive, made out of material. You don't want to freeze dry your pets, do you? I mean, I've got to be honest, I cringe sometimes. You know when you go in a pub and they might have a stuffed owl or, or, or in the Mayflower, where I do the quiz night, there's a stag's head on the wall. You know, with that, and I just think that's just awful. I really do. The sad thing is, of course, that stag probably didn't die naturally, you know. That was shot or killed, murdered so that someone could hang it on the wall. I wish people would do that to other people's heads sometimes. Well, they do in some countries, don't they? That's why I won't go to the Middle East, dear. Oh, might have me head cut off. You think I'm joking? I won't go to any of those countries in case I'm dragged off the plane and have me... <coughs> You've seen the videos. Remember poor old Ken Bigley, dear? Do you remember that? Had his head cut off. Oh, I'm not going there. Although I would like to go to Israel, but it's not, not that sort of country. You know, Israel. I'd love to go to Israel and do the whole Jesus walk thing and Bethlehem and Sea of Galilee and all that business. Oh, that must be wonderful to do that. I bet it's really commercialised when you go there. Um, oh, yes, the other story that we did this week was... Um, About, that's right, again, it was, I think it was in the Daily Express, this one, either Daily, Daily, Daily Express or Daily Mail. And in this particular story, 
what they did was get two young girls, little girls, I think about seven or eight years old, to, to pretend they were lost in a shopping centre. And there was about, I think, 616 people walked past. Only one went to help. And I said, would you help? And I said, I wouldn't. And the reason I wouldn't is because um, someone will come screaming paedophile at you, you know, from, from a shop. Or, get away from my kids, and all that business. And that's why I wouldn't help. In this sad, sad day and age, there are always people out there looking for something wrong all the time. I think I've been out with a few people like that, really. It doesn't matter what you do, you're in the wrong. Are you married to someone like that? Then my heart goes out to you. You know what I mean, don't you? Get away from my kids! And I told this story on Monday, and there was another radio presenter, actually, um, who, who had that exact thing happen to him. And I said, would you go and help them? A few messages came in. Uh, Ian Duff, also in Canada. Hello, Ian. Right, I would grab an old lady and have her watch the children while I went for a security guard. Then I would breathe, sorry, then I would berate the mother or father or guardian when they appeared on the scene, which is, which is good. That's good. I said, you know, it's all very well you going to get a security guard, but by the time you've gone somewhere, found the security guard, you go back, they're likely to have moved, possibly crossed a busy road, possibly run over and dead because you didn't go and help them. But if you did go and help them, Someone's going to scream obscenities at you. Get away from our kids. You see them in the supermarket now. Get away from our kids. Or, you know, that some, you know, as you're out sometimes, right? Supermarket walking around and you, you're walking past and you get a very, very small child and they're learning to say hello. And, and they say hello as they walk past and they wave and you wave back. And I've had mothers grab the child's hand. Don't talk to, don't talk to strangers like that. What's the bloody point, eh? What's the point of living sometimes? Um, Stacy writes in on the subject. Uh, Hi, just watch the video. I understand exactly why no one approached those little girls. Same reason as you say. You can't help a child now without being a paedophile. Well, if that's most people's view, maybe mothers and fathers should be more vigilant and take better care of their children. She's saying, you know, obviously, keep a better eye on them. Sometimes it's difficult, I suppose. I've never been in that situation. When you're shopping or something like that, you've got a child with you, and they run off. You know, maybe, maybe oh, I don't want that tomato sauce, I want that one up there. They go to reach, put it back down, look round, child gone. I always have my little girl, Evie, in reins. What, is she a horse? Why, why have you got a child in reins? <laughs> have, you got, have you got a little horse for a girl? Is that what it is? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always have Evie in reins when I'm out, so she can't wander off. Yes, there are loads of bad people out there, but it's a shame that everyone, and this is true, everyone gets tarred with the same brush. I see so many kids sat on benches outside shops waiting for their parents who are in the shop nowadays. Well, if you're that bothered about someone checking to see if your child is OK, look after them yourself. This is coming from a young mother. Yes, children should be taught about strangers, uh, strangers and danger. I agree totally with that. But if they are educated properly, as to what they do if they get if they get lost and can't find mummy, those situations wouldn't have happened, where people are too scared to ask if they were okay. If I called everyone who smiled and right waved and spoke to Evie and Harry when while when I'm out and about, there would be a huge amount of very unhappy people. It's ridiculous. So thanks for that, Stacey. Do appreciate your um, comments on that one. I, did we have another email about that somewhere? I don't know if we had another email. I 
thought there was someone else wrote in about that. But uh, that was that was Monday's short video, OK? Uh, you can find that if you want to have a little watch of it and perhaps uh, comment yourself uh, by going to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Well, a bit of exciting. Uh, talk, one, one more little bit about cats. I can't remember if I told you last week, but um, uh, one of Ronnie's cats died. It wasn't last week. It was a week before last now. I meant to tell you this last week. Uh, he had an old black cat, 22 years old, bless her heart. And we had noticed over the last few weeks, oh, we've, we've got a... Oh, I know who that is. And good morning to Voice Over Artist. Oh, why can't I hear you? Just a minute. Because I haven't said anything yet, dear. That's why. There you are. I've got you now. Good morning. Hmm. I'm, I'm totally shocked. I almost choked on my breakfast. I, I turn on my computer. I go out in the kitchen. I make my frosted flakes and slice up my bananas and feed the cat and throw them out the back door. You know, all the usual stuff. I come back and hear the first words out of your mouth. You're telling us you got crabs. <laughs> How the hell did you catch crabs? I, I hope you've told Ronnie about this. I, I can I, see it now. They'll, they'll start I, multiplying in his car, and he'll go out some day and go to stick the key in the lock to open up the car, and there'll be this giant crab in there. <laughs> That'll be the end of Ronnie. I, I'm going to have to get the special shampoo, I think, to be honest. <laughs> yes, it's called Quell shampoo, at least here in the States it is. I, what, is it Quell? Is that with a Q or a K? Uh, either or. I don't think the pharmacist <laughs> really cares. I, the, the only time in my life I ever encountered those, when I was in the military, they were referred to as tiny livestock. Tiny livestock. Oh, well, that's a good way of putting it, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Only once in my life did I encounter them, and it didn't have anything to do with my recreational activities. <laughs> I, I was traveling and working in a lot of remote rural areas because of the implementation of cell telephones, and I was one of the few people that could actually climb a high tower and knew what the hell he was doing when he got up there. So uh, I stayed in a rural area with a family who was renting out rooms and I remember waking up in the middle of the night and kind of like scratching and itching and I, I don't oh. know I went back to sleep whatever so <laughs> a couple of days later I had to uh, relieve myself so I go in the bathroom and sit down on the throne oh no and I, I just and happened to down. look down I just happened to look down <clears throat> and here's here's mommy uh, taking the kids out for a walk across my pubes I about freaked <laughs> So, so I caught the rascals, put them in a little plastic jar, and took them with me and showed them to my... I had a friend that owned a, <clears throat> a pharmacy, a uh, chemist, whatever you want to call it. He about laughed so hard he almost peed himself. And he's he explained to me what this was, and I'm like, oh. And he's like, well, you know, who have you been hanging out with? You know, I just, <laughs> I, so I... I all of a sudden, the light bulb went off in my head, and I told them about remembering waking up and feeling something scratching me. I said, yeah, that was them. They were just digging in. He says, they were, oh, jeez, I don't know. But Oh, you can get, poor, you can get that poor off. Poor Ronnie. Oh, you can get boy. that one off towels and things like that, can't you? Oh, uh, yeah, any number of places, but... Uh, i tell you what's always frightened me when I've gone on holiday, bed bugs. I've always been worried I'm going to catch get bed bugs or something like that they had a real problem with that in new york a few years ago didn't they oh all, all over the country i mean I've, I've seen youtube videos of people checking into hotel rooms even in good hotels oh, the first God. thing they do is peel the sheets off the bed and they go around the seams of the edge of the mattress with a flashlight looking for these things yeah because you can't see them during the daytime can you they hide <clears throat> Uh, no, you, sometimes you can see them during the day. I mean, it's just that they're not out walking about. If you want to find them in the daytime, you have to, where the mattresses are sewn together around the edges where that seam is, if you peel that seam back and, and look down in the crack with a flashlight, if they're there, you're going to see them because that's where they hide out. <laughs> God's sake. I imagine if they had military bed bugs and military crabs okay oh. and the, and they had a drill instructor that took them out and marched them around the parade ground hip hop hip hop i don't like the idea of bed bugs at all you're more likely to catch bed bugs than anything else is, did they sort out the problem or is it does it still is it still quite bad there or what 
it's not as bad as it was, but the problem still exists, and it probably will. I mean, these things have been with us since time and memorial. Yes, yes, yeah. It's just got worse, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, and that's, they they say that was due to the that's due to international travel, you know. You, uh, 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 and some of these things you can pick them up simply by sitting on a bus, then going home and sitting in your own armchair, and they've transferred from one to the other. Yeah, I, I saw a report from the health people in Orlando that uh, they had traced the source of the bed bugs down there to a patient zero from Bracknell, but I don't I don't know if it you know had anything to do with your <laughs> trip. That have been a couple of years ago when he went. Where, where, was it someone who went to see a Barry Manilow concert in New York? Uh, could well be. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, but I, I now I, I need to change topics because I heard you talking about children and yeah, I go grocery shopping and quite often I see. Uh, mothers in there with children and some of them are sitting in the shopping cart in the you know the baby holder and some of them are you know toddling along next to mother last week i saw one that was so cute here was this this little girl and she was walking alongside of her mommy and every once in a while she'd run away from her mommy and duck down one of the aisles in the grocery store her mother could still see her yeah she'd grab something bring it back and very slyly dump it into the cart so i'm i'm following along behind these people as we go through the entire store and when we got to the far end uh, next to the very last aisle in the store where they keep all the milk and cheese and all that stuff and the frozen goodies the little girl zips up the aisle and comes back with some kind of i don't know popcorn whatever and yeah you know slyly dunks it into the basket at which point <laughs> yeah. her mother turns and looks at her and goes you do realize we're going to have to put all of those back don't you and <laughs> Uh, all of my grandchildren are in New Zealand, so I don't uh, get to see them. Oh, that's much. a great shame. That's a great yeah. shame. I, I, I like nothing better than, you know, I say going up to see my sister's children. Well, then they're not anymore. There's Jimmy, of course. He's 16. Um, Gary is 28. And my niece Tracy is 26. You know, they're not children anymore. But the, the older ones now have their own children. And I, I love it. I absolutely love it going up there and uh, visiting them. I don't go up enough, you know, but it, it's just a shame they're so far away. They keep saying, oh, you must move up here and all this, you know, but the trouble is I love the house I, I live in and I, I, I do think sometimes, you know, if you was to move up there, then I would be useful. Do you know what I mean by, by, by useful? I could look after the kids, the uh, children. I don't like the word kids. I, I, I could look after the children sometimes, you know, when mum and dad wants to go out or they want to do something like this or, or, or you know, in a few years' time, I might get a phone call. Or, or, oh, hello, Uncle Chris. It's only Tracy. Could you pick up George from school? I'm a bit late. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And I could do all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so yeah, there's I that. And it's it's difficult. I love where I am. That's the trouble. Oh, before I forget, I, I, I need to do a shout-out to Ian Duff in Canada. I heard you talking about him yes, sending reg you an email. Yes, regularly writes in Ian, yes. Uh, Ian and I correspond from time to time on the interweb, and uh, I've actually applied for a job at the CBC uh, in uh, Ottawa. Oh, they're, right, yes. They're, they're, they're looking for, for someone who, you know, might be able to stir things up, I guess. I don't know. I, the people down here in the States seem to be totally afraid of me for some strange reason. I, it may have something to do with my level of education and the fact is, that I you know, know how to use grammar. Is there a little job there for me as well, do you think? Uh, there could be. I'll check into that. And If not, I, the ideal place for us, Chris, I can imagine you and I, you could do the morning show because you're all chirpy and whatever. And My, my thing is to seduce the ladies. Oh, I, turn, I turn on the charm and, you know, let me, do, let me do the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. show and the women will be happy and I'll uh, be happy. That's, that's the slot I'd want, that bit, that late morning one. Either late morning or late night. I'd quite like to be on, you know, sort of 10 till 2 at night, something like that. I don't well, the ideal, the ideal or even, place. Or even yeah. the sort of midnight to, to 4 a.m. one. That, I think that would be quite cool doing that. But on the other hand, you know, I could do that now if I wanted. I could well, just I, come I, home tonight, switch everything on, and do a show. Mm hmm. Mm. I think the uh, geographical location uh, that I would enjoy the most. Uh, did you ever see the movie It Takes a Thief? 
uh, what was it called? Sorry. Uh, like the the Pink Panther guy that used to go crawling across the rooftops. The original one. Yes. From from way back in, yep, yep, in the, yep. the 50s with Princess, what's her name there? Uh, the house that the man lived in that overlooked Monaco that was up on the hillside. Yeah. Remember he had the, the housekeeper lady that you know used to drive like a bat out of That's whatever. right, yes, yes. Uh, I would love to live in that location so I could look out over Monaco. And they actually have an English-speaking radio station, which is owned by a company from Georgia here in, in the Monaco. States. In Monaco. That's quite and an expensive place, isn't it, Monaco? Is that where the rich and famous you, are? Either, either you or I or both of us are going to have to win the lottery because <laughs> we can't move into France unless we first put up a huge amount of money <laughs> because you have to establish a trust fund that guarantees you will never cost the French people anything. Wow. There's got to be money there to cover things like your health care and, and all sorts of things. And That's then sick. they let you in. Uh, Tina Turner, remember Ike and Tina Turner? Tina Turner, yeah. Tina Turner owned an estate on that very hillside, but further up on the plateau. Huge place. Just a, just she, a second. Let, let me just uh, ask you just to just stay there for a second, uh, because those of you listening on UK Health Radio, you're going to be leaving us now. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the same time next week. All right? Thank you, UK Health Radio. Thanks for listening. Uh, and I personally apologize if I have detrimentally affected your mental health. No, nope, carry on. You were saying. Uh, so anyhow, Tina had this big estate up there on the top of the hill. And it was so large, she could bring in everybody that she would be taking on tour with her. So yes. they would live, work, and practice on the estate until it was time to pack everything up and take off and do their around-the-world tours. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a great idea. Because wow. everybody was right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, wonderful to talk to you as always, sir. Okay. You have a lovely day. <clears throat> I'll I'll try, but I'm sure that somebody's going to come along and try to screw it up. And Keep just, smiling. You know. Ta-da. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. There we are. A good friend, voiceover artist. Also known by many other names. I did see another call trying to come in then. I don't know if you want to uh, ring us. Oh, there's two calls trying to come in there. One minute. All right. Um, you can't call in when there's a call already on. So if you want to try that again now, and I'll pick you up, all right? Was it an 0845? I wonder if it was an 0845 number. Yeah, give us a call back now, and uh, that call should come through to me. Um... What was I saying now? Oh, yes, yeah, so hospital appointments. I've been down this week to the foot clinic. by the old foot feet scanned. And apparently, because you know I've had a foot problem now for over a year, apparently I have inflamed tendons on both sides of my feet, which makes sometimes the sides of my feet uh, quite painful to stand on. So that's my problem. I have inflamed tendons. And um, I have to go back to the doctor now. Uh, they they wait a week and then they go back with these when he's got these scan pictures and decides what's to do next. Now, what, I think he did tell me. I think he said there might be some physiotherapy involved. Physiotherapy. Have you ever had anything done like that? Physiotherapy. Not quite sure if that's going to be uh, any good or not. Possibly injections in my feet, and I won't be looking forward to those. All right. Um, so that's that. And I also have now an appointment. I think it's on the um, 12th of April, something like that. I have an appointment now at the ear, nose and throat uh, department at a hospital in Frimley uh, because I've got this ongoing problem with my throat, that, that which I've had now about since January. Um, this side, OK, one side of my throat is, is it, it, it just doesn't sit like the other side does. It's, it's kind of slightly raised. Now, they've already done a scan on this um, because the doctor thought there might be little... Um, what did he say they were? Little... Uh, some, something on the thyroid gland. But it turns out there's nothing on there at all, on this thyroid gland. Let's just take this other call now. Hello, who's calling in now? Hello? Move to new voice text. Oh. First, message. Message from 075. Oh, you don't want to hear that uh, number, do you? Right, hang on a minute. We've got a message. A message is coming. How exciting. To listen to the message, 
press 1. To save it, well, press 2. Press a number. To delete, press 3. Or for more information about delivery of text messages to landlines, press 4. Well, I, ca I can't... <laughs> to listen to the message, please hold. Or to save it, just hang up. We're, we're hold then, we're hold. Hello, Chris, will you please make love to my nanny? Oh! oh! <laughs> We're not doing that, I'm afraid. We won't be listening to that message. Who sent that in? A rude message coming through, boys and girls. Ne you nearly got it on there. You nearly got it, but not quite. Well, hang up on that, thank you very much. Hanged up. <laughs> oh, God, what will people think? <laughs> now, what was I saying? Right, OK, back to the throat thing. So there was there was nothing on the thyroid gland, but the, the problem is... And it keeps affecting my voice, as you can hear today. I'm a little bit hoarse today as well, so um, so I've got an appointment uh, at the clinic to do that. So many little things going wrong at the moment. It's all age, it's all age. Anyway, time for me to go, boys and girls. Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, on the show today. Don't forget, we're live with you every uh, Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. I've lost something now. There it is. Uh, 12 o'clock UK time. You can find that by going to my main website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. At the top there is a link to the live show. Just click on that link and on, on Saturday afternoons at 12 o'clock UK time and you can join us then. All right. Now, just to, to let you know, tomorrow... The UK clocks go forward an hour. Now, it may be generally in all the countries all at the same time, clocks change. They might be going back, they might be going forward. So you want to keep an eye on that. So remember, it will be 12 o'clock UK time next week, but that time may change for you. It might be an hour ahead of what it was today or an hour behind of what it was today. All right, we are moving on to British summertime. That's it then. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching and listening and taking part of the show today. You have a nice week now. Bye bye.